Oh, and I think I'm live. <laughs> Let's hope so. I'm waiting for the uh, notification that everything is good. Uh, let's see. I just, you know, I always like to check my phone. I don't know if any of you are like that whenever you may go live. <laughs> uh, so let me see. Oh, and I see someone is here with me. Yay! Yes, there I am. Fabulous. Okay, excellent. So, oh, now it says Janome Sewing Machines is live. Hmm, okay, but I'm in the Continental Club. Yay! Okay, that's fabulous. I wanted to make sure, you know, you gotta love all these um, lives and all this different technology and everything. Um, we're trying to make the best of it. <laughs> so this is wonderful. So yay, I see I'm not alone. So that's wonderful. I was hoping I could see everybody's names. Oh, sorry for my big finger there. <laughs> um, I was hoping I could see everybody's names. Because then I really love to see, hmm, uh, who's here? Oh, I can't see that. Hopefully, oh, nope. Oh, that's too bad. I really wanted to see where people were. Hmm, there's, oh, now I see, I see, maybe there's a delay. <laughs> yeah, so I see Gabby is here. Yay, hello, okay, fantastic. This is why I jumped on a couple of minutes early, just to see if I could uh, continue to navigate everything a little bit. Ooh, fix myself up there. <laughs> uh, yes, okay, wonderful. Well, yay, uh, it looks like more people are here. Oh, yay, and there's a lane. Okay, there must be a delay. So yes, the joys of Facebook. I haven't done a Facebook Live for quite some time, as you can tell. Uh, at least a Genome America Facebook Live. So I'm very thrilled to be here. And thank you everyone who are slowly uh, starting to come in. This is wonderful. Yes, I love it. Anyway, to share the Genome love, <laughs> which is wonderful. So yes, and, and um, my shirt is not inside out right now because I'm uh, on my iPad and then, uh, you know, I've got the camera reversed. So that's why Janome may be backwards to you. Uh, it's not because my shirt's inside out. <laughs> uh, yes. I wish I was here uh, with a, a camera person uh, navigating for me, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can. So that's wonderful. So yay. Okay. I see more and more people are coming in. That's wonderful. It's great. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope everybody is doing well. Oh, I can't see comments there either. Uh, but, okay, that's good. We seem to be good. If not, I imagine, uh, you know, Danielle or someone from Genome America will jump in and go, wait a minute, we can't hear you or anything, but I think we're okay now. So, uh, yes, I see it's already uh, two minutes after three, so I definitely don't want to keep everyone and I'll get started. So thank you everyone for joining me today. Uh, this feels uh, very unique for doing a Genome America Facebook Live. I haven't done one since the early days of the pandemic. So uh, I'm thrilled to be back to the Genome America audience. And I know a lot of our Genome Canada audience uh, watches as well. Uh, my name is Michael Smith. I'm the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. And yes, I'm coming to you live from my Genome Sewing and Learning Center. This is one of the classrooms here in our head office in Oakville, Ontario. And again, I was thrilled when uh, my Genome America cousins uh, asked me, hey, can you do a live in our Continental Club Facebook group? And I said, uh, sure, <laughs> no problem. Uh, Any way to, again, share the uh, Genome love and specifically of course about the CM17 and the fabulous stitch regulator. So no further delay now. I want to hmm do 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 how can oh I don't see where I can switch. Oh there I can. Okay, sorry. Again, I'm uh, normally I do an Instagram live from uh, Canada up here at our Genome HQ Instagram page. I just wanted to tour around. Nobody sees, nobody needs to see my messy desk. Uh, so here is my classroom from the Genome Sewing and Learning Center. Uh, but let me flip around to be, oh, this is what we all want to see. Yes, that gorgeous Continental M17. And specifically, we're going to be talking today about the stitch regulator. And what does that mean? And what does it do? And how does it all work? So 
for many, many years, uh, Janome has been asked, you know, when can we get a stitch regulator for our domestic sewing machines? We have stitch regulation in our long arm machines. The uh, Quiltmaker Pro, uh, Quiltmaker long arm quilting machines have the built in stitch regulator. So even if we're doing free motion quilting, uh, moving in any direction, using rulers, it's always built into the long arm machine, but typically in our domestic sewing machine here, no, we did not have a stitch regulator for free motion quilting or ruler quilting. Now, when we are doing regular sewing, we have our feed dogs doing regular straight line sewing. You know, the feed dogs is what's feeding our fabric evenly. So we can set our stitch length. And in this case, this is the default 2.4. I always like to do these little samples here. And I, I record, this is 2.4, that's the regular seam allowance, but I even did one at 3.0 and one at 3.5. So the feed dogs in our regular domestic sewing machine is what keeps our stitch length consistent, no matter what the length is. We can program it and boom, there it is, all beautiful. But whenever we did free motion quilting like this, all the swirls and again, using rulers and templates moving in different directions, we then uh, individually, we were the stitch regulator ourselves. We couldn't rely on the machine for regulating our stitches to basically make them the consistent length is what a stitch regulator does, is that it makes your stitches the consistent length no matter what direction you're moving. So that's definitely the joy. I think of the stitch regulator is basically like training wheels. Uh, they definitely help uh, give you confidence if you want to do free motion quilting and ruler quilting, but until now you've been afraid to do so. The Continental M17 is the first machine in the Janome line that uh, has the stitch regulator uh, included so we can do ruler quilting and free motion quilting. Now, perhaps you could even see ooh, here on my little sample. So here is my 2.4 regular sewing with my feed dogs uh, feeding the fabric. This is my 2.4 stitch length free motion. That looks pretty consistent to me. Uh, and then over here is 3.0. Now, generally when we're quilting through thicker layers, we need to lengthen our stitch uh, be, to accommodate for that extra thickness. So uh, I personally like to quilt on a 3.0. So there I've adjusted my stitch length for regular sewing. Well then here, this is free motion 3.0. Now the thing with making your stitch longer though, if you're gonna do a lot of curly cues and all of that, again, keep in mind, don't do anything too tight because that stitch length is gonna be a little longer. So your curves and your circles may not look as good if they're really small. Bigger, no problem, but just be careful of your stitch length when it comes to circles and that. But again, that looks very consistent to me. Over here is 3.5, and then here is my free motion. Now, because I knew, again, 3.5 in a tight little circle, that's gonna be uh, not so beautiful. So instead, I just did this meandering. It looks like our serpentine stitch, actually. So there is a great way to uh, do your free motion quilting. And again, the, the stitch length here looks very consistent. So that is the joy, and there is the back, ooh, there is the backside. <laughs> that is the joy of the stitch regulator. It definitely will help give you that confidence to do your free motion quilting and your ruler quilting. And of course, you can do it on your fabulous CM17. Now, what you're gonna do is lots of samples. Here's my first couple of little samples. This is great, cut it up as a mug rug, make it a pet blanket, it's never gonna go to waste. But the main thing is you're learning, oh, this is some variable zigzag. These are just some little swirly, curly cues. You're learning your machine and you are learning how to adjust it and how to adjust your hands. Oh, a little bit of ruler quilting. You're gonna do lots of samples like this and it is so fun to play. So the stitch regulator comes included with the Continental M17. Now it is not, this is your precision marker for your embroidery with the laser light. So they look very similar. They attach to the machine in the same way, but this one is not your stitch regulator. This is for your embroidery. So I'm going to put that aside. This is our fabulous ASR Accurate Stitch Regulator, the AccuStitch Stitch Regulator. 
that it attaches to the machine on the regular presser bar holder, which I will show you that again, we're just going to remove the regular uh, presser foot holder here, and then we're going to attach it here with the screw. And then at the back of the machine is a little port that will accept this and that precision marker. Now it's a little harder for me to show because I don't have multiple cameras. So in your instruction manual, uh, which you can find online and uh, you know, print it out if you choose or if you've got the AccuAssist app, uh, hopefully you've downloaded that for free. Your instruction manual is built in there as well. Uh, so uh, it's basically just above the uh, presser foot uh, lifter, then there is the port here that will accept that connector into the machine. So it attaches like a regular foot holder and then it goes into the back of the machine in that little trap door. Open that trap door and then uh, plug it in there. So very simple and easy to put on. Now, the beauty of this stitch regulator, you know, one of the reasons why Janome didn't jump on the bandwagon several years ago when a couple of other, you know, uh, machines and other brands were coming out with stitch regulators, they really wanted to make it, you know, unique and, and really try to, you know, perfect it as much as they could. So this, I thought, was ingenious. Not only do we have the stitch regulator, but now we have ooh, a variety of feet that we can use with it. Now, specifically, that is your stitch regulator, that little window. I think it's the window to your soul. <laughs> so uh, this little window, we want to make sure not to actually touch it with our fingers. We don't want fingerprints there. Uh, after quilting a lot, you know, especially cotton fabric can produce some lint, some dust. So we want to uh, inspect the bottom of that screen. It's basically like a camera taking a picture of your fabric and we want to make sure to keep that clean so you can dust it off with a light uh, cloth. Don't want to use any solvents or anything like that, but just to make sure that it stays like lint free in order again for that like camera to read your fabric. So this is our stitch regulator. Now the fun thing is, Janome has had for a number of years, oh, there's our closed toe free motion foot, and there's our open toe free motion foot, and the big uh, clear view, I call this the dinner plate, the big clear view, zigzag, uh, free motion foot. And then, of course, a few years ago, we got the beautiful QR ruler foot, again, with the little divot in the front, the nice high quarter of an inch profile, so then we can safely use rulers, uh, again, in free motion, any direction we want, uh, with our machine here with this QR ruler foot. So these uh, feet, Janome has had for a number of years, but when it came to developing feet for the stitch regulator, they didn't want to have just one foot. Now we have the ASR, and that stands for, again, the AccuStitch Stitch Regulator. So we have the ASR QC. This is the closed toe foot. And then we have the ASR, ooh, sorry, QO, the open toe foot. And then, yes, the ASR QV, clear view foot. Uh, someone uh, once commented on Social media, this looks like the Starship Enterprise. I agree, it looks like a spaceship. <laughs> so that's very cool. And, you know, other brands have had the stitch regulator for a couple of years. So the stitch regulator itself is new to Janome, but the stitch regulator for a domestic machine has been out for a while. But this is industry first. Janome is uh, always at the you know forefront. And yes, we have the ASRQR. So this is that beautiful high profile quarter of an inch thick uh, ruler foot and that same little divot in the front, just like the regular QR foot. But now we can use the ruler safely with the uh, stitch regulator and again industry first. This is definitely very special. When I was at the VDTA convention in Las Vegas, ooh, this was definitely the hit of the convention. This beautiful CM17 and specifically everybody wanted to know how does the stitch regulator work. It's really quite ingenious. So we can attach very easily we just tip up the uh, foot a little bit here to the back and then clip. That's it. So simple. And then there's a little black bar here. We just push into that and it drops right out. So you can easily, very quickly, 
snap them in and unsnap them. It's uh, very much like our AccuFeed Flex system where we can uh, attach different feet into the foot holder and the stitch regulator works the same. This is the holder with the stitch regulator window there and then now we have four interchangeable feet depending on what we want to do. Uh, this I thought was very cool is not only does this, uh, the engineering of it all, the, the structure of it all, very solid, very secure, but even uh, the way these uh, feet are constructed, this little bar here adds to the stability of the foot, but it acts like a, a needle guard here. Like I can't, a finger guard, I can't, you know, get my, my finger in there if I'm uh, down on the fabric and adjusting my fabric, you know, I'm sweeping off some lint or something from my fabric. These act as like finger guards. So I thought that was brilliant. So very, very cool. So it is quite easy to put on the machine. I want to go over some uh, setup here. You'll see that, oh yes, when I do my free motion quilting or quilting of any kind, we can use any threads. We always got questions about um, what kind of thread. So this is our Madeira Arrow quilt, for example, nice big tall cone, a uh, big king cone of the iris cotton quilting thread. Whatever thread you want to use, whatever size, we have the extra wide uh, spool pins here. Uh, even a little mini king cone of the iris cotton quilting thread. Or for my demo here, I like quilting. This is our Janome uh, polyester embroidery thread. And when I'm doing some free motion quilting, uh, in particular, or again, quilting of any kind, ruler quilting or with uh, walking or the um, even feed foot. Uh, I like using the polyester embroidery thread because it just adds a little bit of luster. You can see it a little bit more clearly. So, but again, any thread that you want to use is fine. Uh, now in the needle here, I have changed to our fabulous purple tip needle. They come in a blister pack, again, from your Janome dealer. Uh, typically red, uh, the red tip needle is what's in the machine. Now this is a size 14. I use this red tip needle for like 99% of my sewing. But these purple tip needles are also size 14, but I really love using them for free motion quilting and again, ruler quilting. They help eliminate those skip stitches that can sometimes happen when we're sewing through thicker layers the purple tip needle have a cobra head. So if you picture the tip of the needle and then it flares out like a big cobra snake has that flared head and we call it the cobra head on the purple tip needle. So it flares out to help separate the fibers of your fabric. So your needle thread and your bobbin thread can intersect more readily. So switch to your purple tip needle. It'll definitely be much easier. Uh, something else I love to do for free motion quilting and ruler quilting, we switch to our low tension, or we often call it the blue dot bobbin holder. You'll see the little uh, blue triangle there. And perhaps on the inside of the bobbin holder, you can see it says eight grams. Now the regular bobbin holder that comes in the machine is 10 grams and the low tension blue dot bobbin holder is eight grams. So there's less tension on this bobbin holder. So it's not pulling the needle threads uh, to the backside as readily. So that's great if we're moving in many directions. We don't want to see that needle thread on the backside. Certainly when we're quilting through all layers, we want the top and the bottom to look beautiful. Uh, so I like switching to that blue dot bobbin holder. It just means that we don't have to fiddle with adjusting the needle tension as much. Maybe you may have to a little bit here and there, but generally I switch to my blue dot bobbin holder and I don't touch my needle tension at all. So specifically we want to make sure we get the one that says for Continental M7 Professional. Now this is the Continental M17, so it will be the same bobbin holder because it's that same bobbin setup where we've got that laser light reading our low uh, bobbin alert there and we've got the same fabulous one touch needle plate. So I'm going to remove my needle plate and then take out my regular bobbin holder and again that says 10 grams so we know that the regular one I'll switch very quickly to blue dot. It's in there nice and firm. Now when we do free motion quilting and ruler quilting it's recommended to use 
and the machine is telling us, make sure you got the proper presser foot hood. I love having a machine that helps us uh, think for us. <laughs> uh, so when we're doing free motion quilting and ruler quilting, it is recommended we use the straight stitch needle plate that has that center hole. Some people uh, mix it up with the HP needle plate, but that's the high performance needle plate with that um, hole to the left. So we, we don't want to use this one. We generally use the straight stitch one. In this case, I'm using the zigzag one because I'm going to switch back and forth to variable zigzag using the bigger clear view foot. So just to save a bit of time, I'm using my zigzag uh, plate and then that way I don't have to change it. Now all these instructions are in your manual and uh, also our Genomi Life blog uh, is a blog that I edit from uh, Canada but again is available all around the world is a good resource. So now I'm going to take my foot holder off. I'm going to park it up into the top of the machine. I always love calling this, this is the garage up here. So it's a great spot for your feet to stay to rest. So again, this accurate stitch regulator, the ASR, I'm just going to put on very quickly and tighten it up first with your fingers and then you definitely want to come back in with your screwdriver. Now uh, the machine comes with one of our little uh, screwdrivers, little white screwdrivers, but you can also get these larger white screwdrivers from your Janome dealer. And I really like those because I get a little bit more torque power on it so I can really tighten it up uh, so that I never have to worry about it, you know, coming out or anything. So at the back of the machine, again, just about above where the uh, presser foot lift is, is the port for the accurate stitch regulator. I'm going to plug it in in just a minute because you'll see here on my beautiful middle LCD screen, I have the stitch uh, width and stitch length and, you know, needle tension adjustments. I also have them here for oops, uh, stitch width and stitch length and, and uh, needle thread tension. So that's for regular sewing. Now again, for traditional free motion quilting, we would go into our home button and then our sewing applications mode. We'd go into our little quilting icon here. And then when we want free motion quilting, oh look, my stitch length has completely disappeared. Uh, that all I have is my uh, thread tension adjustment. And same with here, my, my stitch length has completely disappeared when we're doing traditional free motion, again, using one of these feet, because again, the feed dogs have dropped and now we become the stitch regulator. It's up to us to move the fabric and the, the correct speed with the speed of the machine. We call it, you know, getting that sweet spot, uh, which for some people is very intimidating. So the very fun thing is when I plug this accurate stitch regulator in, ooh, keep your eyes down here, <laughs> you will see some new adjustments become available to you. Oh, yes, do I have it in there enough? <laughs> the buildup. Oh, make sure proper presser foot is attached. Yes. And after all that big buildup, and I did this before, maybe I need to turn off my machine and turn it back on. <laughs> I did this practice before, when you plug it in, the ASR comes up and then you see right away that the uh, stitch length comes back into play. Now you have that option. So let's go back into our sewing applications mode and let's go back into quilting and then let's go back into free motion and then I should see that ASR, there we go, because I was in the wrong stitch. Ah, this is a perfect learning lesson, that I was in the wrong stitch because my foot holder here, the PDH foot, that's not one of my feet. So when I know, oh, that didn't work, there, there is our ASR. Ah, that is our accurate stitch regulator. So 
uh, when you're trying to select where is that stitch regulator, keep selecting your different stitches. And then here, that's normally our regular free motion, QC or QO. But when we hit the ASR, boom, there our screen changes to one of our ASR, QC or QO feet. And then here, there is my stitch length. And here on our middle screen, there is the stitch length. So we can adjust the stitch length now, even though we're free motion quilting. Now we also have some ooh, other adjustments here. We can set the height of the foot to just hover over our fabric. Now the default is 1.5, but if you have um, really thick uh, fabric, you've got uh, maybe two layers of batting, really thick batting, you can make the foot hover a little higher over your fabric. Uh, now, if you find, though, if it's up too high and your fabric is pulling up every time the needle comes up or your thread is breaking, then your, your fabric is up too high. So then we want to reduce it. Now, conversely, if you're using like a really thin batting, maybe a layer of flannel, uh, then you can drop it down. Now, you don't want to drop it too close to your fabric because you still need your fabric to move freely. So I'll do mine maybe a 1.2 and then hit OK and I'm good. Now we also have the selection of the one stitch stop with the needle and the little dot. So if I have it selected, the machine's going to stitch one stitch and then it's going to stop so I can pull up my bobbin thread. That way the back of the quilt stays nice and neat. Uh, I can disengage that though and then I can select do I want my needle to go in the, stay in the fabric when I stop sewing or do I want to select auto pivot which means the needle stays in the fabric uh, and the presser foot raises. So you've got lots of adjustments you can make. I'm going to go back to that uh, one stitch stop. Now we can go down here to our little cheat sheet because you'll see that, oh, this is now grayed out that I have that ASR uh, illuminated. So I know these other options that I had selected earlier, those are out of the way. If I go into the little cheat sheet, again, the only options I can choose with that accurate stitch regulator is free motion quilting, ruler work, or variable zigzag. So ooh, let's go back into free motion. So. And again, we can adjust the stitch length. Uh, again, 2.4 is standard. We can scroll this way. We can, you know, touch plus or minus. Or again, we can also use the knobs here. I'm all the way at maximum. Again, I like when the little beeps tell me, nope, you've gone enough. That's enough. <laughs> so when we get into stitch regulation, we need to keep fabric under the regulator in order to work properly. So uh, the instructions recommend about uh, three quarters of an inch from the edge is that you want to keep your fabric. So then again, the, the, the camera underneath can, can keep reading. So I will just do one stitch stop. Now it's up to you whether or not you want to use the foot control or the stop start button. Right now I've got the foot control in and then I've got that one stitch stop. So then there I'm going to pull up my uh, bobbin thread and then away we go. We can hold on to these threads and then cut them later, do a couple of tacking stitches. Now the stitch regulator Oops, and I'm just going to cut my threads here. The stitch regulator again starts slow until you start moving the fabric. You have to move it. The stitch regulator is, again, think of it like training wheels. It's a tool to help you keep your stitches accurate and even, but you are still in control. You still have to guide your fabric and you're going to work with that stitch regulator to help guide your stitches. We know the stitch regulator is working, it'll illuminate. So again, it, it starts slow and you have to move. And you're basically wanting to find again that sweet spot. How quick or how slow can you move your fabric to help the stitch regulator, you know, keep up with you. You don't want to outrun it. You don't want to go too slow. There are some little things you can do to adjust it. 
generally we keep the uh, speed control slider all the way up, but again, we're going to work in conjunction with the speed of the machine by moving our hands. So it's something you really do have to play and practice with. Uh, now again, if I'm going to baste the edge of my quilt down here, then as I'm getting to the end, well, oh, the stitch regulator is not going to work so great because again, it's trying to read that fabric. So what I like to do is now I would pivot the fabric like that. So I have the majority of fabric under the stitch regulator. And then I'll start going down here to baste down my quilt. Now, a lot of times when people do free motion quilting, they love to do Oh yes, we use like our Janome palm paddles, for example, that yes, you can still use your palm paddles. And again, my uh, one stitch stop there to raise up my bobbin thread to keep the back of the quilt nice and neat. We can always hang up our threads at the side uh, thread holder as well, so we don't have to hold on to them. Uh, but again, if you still like to use the palm paddles or if you like to wear gloves for free motion, you can still use those with your free motion, with your accurate stitch stitch regulator. And again, you'll hear the machine rev up and slow down in order to uh, try to keep up and match your movements. So I'll just show you a little sample here. So ooh, there we are at 2.4. Now, of course, because I'm going around a smaller curve, the stitch regulator automatically is trying to adjust the stitches to go around that smaller curve. So it's a, a tighter curve, that it's a more fluid curve. Uh, overall, though, consistency is what you're looking for. And there is on the back, which I always ask myself, does this, because I'm not that great of a free motion quilter. <laughs> I must admit, I use the long arms and I love it because they have that built-in stitch regulator. So now as a free motion quilter with a stitch regulator, that's again, definitely the training wheels to help you build that confidence and that mind muscle uh, memory. But ask yourself, do my stitches free motion wise look better uh, with the stitch regulator or without. In my case, I think, oh, they definitely look better uh, with using the stitch regulator. So it's really, really fun to go and play. Now, again, I mentioned you can use the stop start button if you wish, or the foot control. With the foot control, as soon as you stop your uh, sewing, as soon as you take your foot off the foot control, the needle is going to stop just like regular. But when I unplug the uh, foot control, and then now I'm going to do my free motion quilting. Again, I'm going to do that same one sit stop. In this case, I'm not going to bother to pull up my bobbin just to save a little bit of time already. Oh, my time is flying. <laughs> uh, but we, again, always have to move the fabric. When we stop moving the fabric, the needle is going to slowly cycle up and down. So I think of this a lot like our long arm machines. We have the precision mode, which means the needle stops on a dime whenever you stop moving the fabric. Or uh, we have the cruise mode, which means the needle is always cycling down even though we're not moving the fabric. So this using the stop start button is definitely the cruise mode. That needle is always cycling. In order to stop the machine, we have to still hit stop. So those are like the big differences. Uh, and I find depending on which technique, I prefer ruler quilting, for example, if it's just me personally, but ruler quilting, I prefer using the foot control. When I'm free motion quilting, uh, I really do like using the stop start. I find it's a little bit more uh, fluid. Now, when I'm uh, stitching along here, I'll purposely go really fast, you know, depending on what you are, a speed demon. Oh, maybe you hear that little chirp that is constantly going on. That is a little warning bell telling you, hey, uh, the stitch regulator is having a little bit of trouble keeping up. Now, 
my stitches because I was moving my fabric way faster. Uh, my stitches are bigger, but they're consistently bigger. So ultimately, consistency is what we're really going for. Uh, so again, not bad. But uh, again, I was moving my fabric purposely. I was way too fast. And the stitch regulator is telling us, hey, maybe you want to slow down. Uh, again, it's a tool. It's, it's the training wheels, but you're still in control. You're still riding the bike. So we don't want to make the stitch regulator work any harder than we need to. Uh, so if you hear that little chirp, you should really slow down. When I go into the settings, we can go into our ooh, quilt. Ooh, we can go into our sewing settings here is the uh, straight line with the little zigzag and go over, scroll over our screen, that yes, we have some controls here in our settings. So this is ultimately the warning sound. So if you're really annoyed by that warning sound, you can turn it off. Uh, but I really suggest leaving it on, particularly while you're learning, while you're getting that mind muscle memory, leave it on, it'll tell you, hey, slow down. And definitely the stitch regulator, even though we've got, again, 1300 stitches in regular sewing mode, uh, it, generally the stitch regulator, again, it's, a, it's trying to help you. So it works better if you're going slower. Uh, but again, eventually you can turn it off if you wish. Now, if you are already a quite proficient uh, free motion quilter, again, you may not even need to use the stitch regulator. If you're already great without it, well, okay, then then don't use it. But if you're, again, new and, and you want to try it, but you're scared, then this is definitely uh, for you. Uh, if you find you are, again, a, a little bit more proficient, a little bit faster of a sewer, you can adjust the sensitivity here of the stitch regulator. So if you are stitching along your free motion and you noticed your, uh, if your stitch length wasn't, ooh, if your stitch length wasn't so consistent, I mean, here again, it's consistently uh, bigger and here it is consistently smaller, but if it wasn't so consistent, maybe you're using a textured fabric, uh, maybe a, a napped fabric like velvet or something, and, and if the stitches aren't regulating as well, then you can increase plus increase that regulator to, to read the fabric more. So then, uh, and as well, if you're moving your fabric slower, then, uh, but it's not picking up as much. You can, uh, again, set that up. So it's reading the fabric uh, quicker. Now, conversely, again, if you are a faster sewer, faster free motion quilting, regular is zero, uh, then maybe you're gonna go down to negative, you know, negative two, negative three. Uh, it's really, it, you don't need to go a lot. Like try each one incrementally if you're, a faster free motion quilter and that, that chirping sound, that alarm is coming on a little much. Uh, again, instead of turning it off, you could maybe decrease or uh, minusing, decrease the sensitivity. So always, whenever you make a selection, make sure you hit OK. So then now I've told the stitch regular there, I don't need you to work so much, you know, because uh, I'm going to go a little faster. So therefore, we can uh, tell it it doesn't need to read as much. So away we go. So as I go faster, the chirp is still coming on, but it's not coming on quite like it used to. It's not coming on as, as often as it used to. And I'm going faster. And you will see by decreasing my sensitivity, ooh, there I am. The stitches here, you see my stitches, they're still consistent. These are still consistent, but these are, these stitches over here are bigger because I was moving my fabric faster and the stitch regulator was really working to keep it up. And then again, it, it, it is consistent, but it's bigger than I really wanted. When I reduced that sensitivity because I was going so much faster, then they, they are beautiful. They are more of a 2.5 length. So it's really important that you play with your sensitivity based on, again, are you a slower 
free motion quilter, are you a little faster, then you can reduce that sensitivity and still get really good results. So there's definitely things that you can uh, play around with to help improve your results. And again, remember, you want to work with the stitch regulator to help. Now, of course, because time is racing. Now, I just unclipped the, the back here. You don't need to remove your uh, foot holder off in order to change your foot. Uh, you can just hit that little black bar. Now, remember, all, almost all of our Genome machines have this extra high presser foot lift, so we could help remove it this way. Now, let's not forget about this fabulous thumb wheel. I am using this thumb wheel for everything. So I need to just, oh, raise up my needle a little bit. So I use this thumb wheel and now I have more clearance before I was, you know, hitting, pricking my finger. But no, using that thumb wheel, you get your needle out of the way. And now you don't have to take your foot off in order to, uh, or you don't have to take your foot holder off in order to change it. I do want to talk about uh, ruler quilting though very quickly. Uh, so yes, then again, we use that extra high, oops, extra high presser foot lift to help get it into place. And it'll be very helpful. You won't have a camera in your way. <laughs> uh, make sure my thread doesn't get caught. There we go. So that's good. So when we're going to get into ruler quilting, we often get asked, oh yes, can I use my a uh, quarter of an inch thick long arm rulers with my accurate stitch regulator. Yes, you totally can. Look at that beautiful profile there. Our quarter of an inch ASRQR ruler foot, and this matches the quarter of an inch thick. Uh, these are our so comfortable long arm quilting rulers. And then, uh, yes, so they work beautifully in hand. So that's great. Uh, now, yes, this is my favorite heart template from the Genomi ruler kit. So double check with your Genomi dealer. They have all these fabulous rulers for you. This was from the Genomi ruler kit. Uh, so yes, that we can use. Now ruler quilting is where uh, I like using that foot control because again of that precision of that needle stopping exactly when I take my foot off the, the gas basically. So when I do my ruler quilting here, oops, let me get in the right position. There we go. Uh, yes, then we're going to, so that was free motion. Ooh, free motion. <laughs> and then we're going to go into ruler quilting. And again, we've got some options depending on the thickness of our fabric. So we can uh, do medium, which means our uh, foot is hovering a little higher above our fabric, but we can still go in to refine it, or light, and then again, it's closer down to the fabric, we can still go in to refine it. And again, we'll see that I'm still ASR and the QR foot. So that is good. And then when we do our ruler, this is where, again, I like having the speed control instead of all the way up and me personally because I tend to move my fabric when I'm free motion quilting I'm faster when I'm ruler quilting I move my fabric slower so this is where I might turn that speed control down a little bit more and if I'm moving my fabric a little slower I may go into my settings uh, back into our sewing settings, uh, that if I'm moving my fabric slower, I may go back into this sensitivity and now actually increase it. And again, we only need to do one, kind of one or two little notches at a time. The adjustment, it, it really does uh, make a big difference. So you see which, which number you are. So it's something you just experiment with. And then if I think, oh, maybe if that chime is going off too much, maybe I can reduce a little bit. Or again, maybe I just need to slow down, breathe, and then do it again. So it's something that you will uh, need to experiment with. And again, everybody's sweet spot is different. But the nice thing is you will really, maybe I will turn it up a little bit, <laughs> Uh, you'll really have a lot of fun. And again, if you've been afraid to try free motion quilting and ruler quilting, that by now having the accurate stitch regulator 
Isn't that adorable? It's so cute. The accurate stitch regulator will really help make a difference. So again, if you notice like, oh, maybe my stitches weren't as consistent as they should, well, maybe I need to turn up that uh, regulator a little more. Now, certainly some of the big uh, differences uh, that um, red fabric and dark fabric was typically uh, not so great with stitch regulators, but in our Janome stitch regulator, as you see, no problem. We were demonstrating that always at uh, VDTA. So uh, the red and the dark is really no problem. But again, depending on your print or the color, maybe you do need to adjust the sensitivity a little bit. For your rulers, you should definitely stick to your clear rulers. Uh, a colored ruler or an opaque ruler, again, may interfere with the, the camera that taking a picture of your fabric. So the if you had a colored ruler, it may kind of throw it off a little bit. So ultimately, a clear ruler will uh, work best as well. Now, very, uh, very quickly, I did want to talk about uh, variable zigzag. I know I've gone way too long. I hope um, Genome America will still invite me back. <laughs> Uh, as usual, I always try to share so much information, uh, but with variable zigzag, it's very fun. And especially again, if you're an art quilter, oh, you're going to love this thread painter. You're going to love this. So variable zigzag we have had in some of our machines like memory craft 15,000, but here we make sure, oh yes, that it now we can use the ASR, and there it is, our big uh, ASR. Uh, M means middle needle position, and L means left needle position. And then it changes here graphics. So if you've ever wondered what M and L, and even sometimes it's an R, it means right needle position. Now again, this is where, because we are in stitch regulated mode, even though we're gonna be moving free motion, I can adjust my length here. And we can also adjust our width here. We're at nine millimeters. If we want a more narrow zigzag, we can adjust it here. We can also go back into our settings if our variable zigzag sensitivity is up here. So if we want the knee lifter that we're going to be using in conjunction with sewing, so here's my knee lifter down on my machine. So we're going to be using that knee lifter to make a zigzag, to swing the needle back and forth. And again, we can change the, the width there, but the sensitivity here to our knee lifter. So if we want to make it uh, a little more sensitive, then again, we can increase it. If we want to decrease the sensitivity of our knee lifter and make it swing out a little wider, then we can go into minus. It's a only you know one way or the other, but we can do this here in our settings mode. And again, whatever change you may make, make sure that you hit OK. And here we go. So the knee, uh, the variable zigzag. This is a time where I will unplug my foot control. So again, you've got to experiment. What works best for you in which application? Uh, with variable zigzag, to me, it's like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Uh, to me, it's just easier not to have the foot control in play. So I can just focus on swinging my need or my knee lifter back and forth. Now, if you're comfortable and familiar with using a knee lifter, you know typically it's to raise and lower your foot. But when we use it with variable zigzag mode, it's very fun because then we can create a zigzag pattern. So if I don't move my knee lifter, my uh, stitching is straight. But if I move my knee lifter, and this is where again, the thread painter, oh, this is wonderful. So again, I hear my chirping sound a lot, so I know I'm going too fast. Or again, maybe I need to decrease my sensitivity so it's not going off as much. Now it's, again, this is where, oh, I end up taking so much time. <laughs> uh, and again, when we're using stop start, we got to make sure to hit stop to stop the needle. And then that's going to stop the illumination here. If you're still sewing, and, and your your foot control, uh, your foot holder here is still illuminated. It's because the, the machine is still working. You have to hit stop in order to stop it. 
So very quickly with variables zigzag, I'm sorry to take so long, but again, it's just so fun. Now, if you're doing thread painting, for sure, you're going to need way more stabilizer, way more backing, uh, so you don't get puckering and all that on your fabric, but it's just so fun to do. And now we've got the advantage of, again, having that regulated variable zigzag mode because of that accurate stitch regulator. So it really is ooh, very fun to watch. Oh, yay. So did I cover, I hope, everyone's questions. Again, the iPad was off to my side, so I couldn't really see everyone's questions, but I will go in. Oh, where can I flip around? Oh, there we go. There I am. Okay. I will go in and answer everybody's questions, uh, you know, later, uh, because again, the iPad was kind of to my side, so I couldn't really see everything. Uh, I'm so sorry to take so long, but thank you so much. Again, I always just want to share so much Janome love. Uh, so hopefully I will see you again in the Continental Club and uh, be demonstrating more fabulous techniques on the Continental M17. So thank you everyone for joining me today. Have a wonderful wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>